Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Welcome to our lesson on graphing linear equations in slope-intercept form. You're going to need some graph paper. If you don't have any handy, go to my website, www.mastermath.info, and then hit the Lessons tab. On the Lessons page, you'll see a link right about there for plain graph paper. If you click on that link, a sheet of graph paper will uh, suddenly appear and you can print that and use it during this lesson. And during this lesson, we're going to be talking about slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, and we're also going to talk about parallel lines. Now hopefully by now you know how to graph a linear equation using tables and using the intercepts. But today we're going to learn about the big kahuna. <laughs> y equals mx plus b. When you get comfortable with y equals mx plus b, you'll probably never graph using intercepts again in your life. Well, what does y equals mx plus b mean? I mean, I can see there's a couple of variables in there. I can see there's a y, and I can see that there's an x. But what's that m mean, and what's that b mean? Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you. The m is the slope of the line. And the b is the y-intercept. If I know the y-intercept, and I know the slope of the line, I can graph it. Maybe it makes sense to review slope and intercept real quickly before we go any further into this lesson. What is slope? Well, hopefully you remember that slope is rise over run. I take any two points on the line and I find out how much I rise and how much I run in order to get from the first point to the second point. And if I make that division, rise divided by run, I'll know the slope of the line. For instance, on this line, I rise positive 1, and I run negative 1. So my slope is 1 over negative 1, or a slope of negative 1. How about intercepts? What does, do intercepts mean? Well, there can be either an x-intercept or a y-intercept. And that's just where the line crosses the x or the y-axis. You can see that green circle. Well, that's where the line crosses the x-axis, and that's the x-intercept. And the red circle is over the point where the line crosses the y-axis, and that's the y-intercept. So this line has a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 2. And you need to memorize this formula. y equals mx plus b. That m stands for the slope of the line. And if I replace that m with the actual slope of the line, minus 1, then my equation becomes y equals minus 1x plus b. B. What's B mean? Well, B is the y-intercept. And in this case, our y-intercept is 2. So if I replace that B with the positive 2, my equation becomes y equals minus 1x plus 2. So the equation for this line is y equals minus x plus 2. Here's one for you to try, but if you don't get it, don't worry about it. This is a little tough. I want to see if you can figure this out, though. I want you to graph y equals minus x minus 3. Now, you remember 
that I've got that in slope intercept form. So my slope is that minus or minus 1. And my y intercept is minus 3. So if I start with one point on the graph and use the slope to figure out a second point on the graph, I'll have two points and then I can graph the equation. You try it. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Did you get it? I hope so. Hopefully you remember that y equals mx plus b is the standard form for a slope intercept. And the m equals the slope, and the b equals the y-intercept. Well, our equation is y equals minus x minus 3. So what would b be? What would the y-intercept be? Well, it would have to be minus 3. So we can identify one point on the line by identifying where the y-intercept is at minus 3. Now, we've got one point, but we haven't used our slope yet. And the slope of this line is minus 1. A slope of minus 1. Well, you remember slope equals rise over run. So I need a ratio or a fraction that equals minus 1. I need to convert minus 1 into one of the many, many combinations of rise over run that equals minus 1. And one of those combinations would be a rise of minus 1 and a run of positive 1. But that's not the only one that works. We could also have a rise of positive 2 and a run of negative 2 because positive 2 over negative 2 equals minus 1, just as minus 1 over positive 1 equals minus 1. So you could use any fraction that equals minus 1. I'm going to use minus 1 over positive 1, because that just seems like the easiest one. So I've got a rise of minus 1, so I'm going to go down 1 from my starting point. I'm going to go down 1, and then I've got a run of positive 1, so I'm going to go 1 to the right. And that identifies a second point on my line. Now I've got two points. It's a simple matter to run a line through them. And that is the line that represents the equation y equals minus x minus 3. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, in order to figure out what the equation to this line is, I, I need two bits of information. I need to know what the slope of the line is, and I need to know what the y-intercept is. Let's figure out the slope first. The slope equals 2. How do I know that? Well, I pick any point on the line, and I want to pick a point where uh, I've got uh, x and y axis lines uh, that intersect, and I'll pick that point right there. And then I have to pick a second point, and I'm going to, uh, once again, look for a point where my x and y axis lines intersect, and I'll pick that point right there. Then I figure out my rise, 1, 2, over my run, 1. 2 over 1 equals a slope of 2. Now i got to figure out what my y-intercept is. Well, my y-intercept is minus 1. Where does this line cross the y-axis? Right there at minus 1. So now I know my slope is 2, and my y-intercept is minus 1. And the basic form for an equation in slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. I just substitute 2 for m and minus 1 for b, and this line's equation is y equals 2x 
minus 1. Well, what if they gave you an equation like this? 2x minus y equals 4. And they said, find the slope of this line. Could you do it? Yeah, you could. But first, you're going to have to manipulate this equation a little bit. You're going to have to move, move it around, change it about, until it's in the form y equals mx plus b. And you're good enough at algebra to do that. I think the first thing I want to do is put my negative y on the right side of the equation so it's no longer a negative y. So I'm going to add y to both the left and the right side of the equation. And now it's going to read 2x equals 4 plus y. Now I've got to isolate that y, so I want to move that 4 to the left side of the equation, which means I've got to subtract 4 from both the right and the left side of the equation. And now the equation reads 2x minus 4 equals y. Well, hopefully you can see that slope-intercept form, but if you like to be uh, completely regular about it, we can turn it around so it reads y equals 2x minus 4. That's slope-intercept form. And my m is 2. So my slope is 2. Try this one. Hit your pause button, graph this equation, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Well, it's easy, I hope you see, to graph an equation that's in slope and intercept form, but this equation isn't in slope and intercept form, so I'm going to have to manipulate it a little bit. Seems to me that the easiest way to get this into slope-intercept form is to take that negative y and move it to the right side of the equation so it becomes positive y. And then I've got y equals something. So let's do that. I'm going to add y to both sides of the equation. On the left, the y's cancel each other out. And on the right, I'm left with a positive y. And my equation reads... 2x plus 3 equals y, which hopefully you understand is the same thing as y equals 2x plus 3. And now I know my slope, 2, and I know my y-intercept, plus 3. So now I can graph it. First, let's identify that y-intercept, positive 3. Now my slope is positive 2, a rise of 2 and a run of 1. So now I can plot a second point. And if I've got two points, I can draw a line. And that is the line for y equals 2x plus 3. You try this one. Determine the equation in slope-intercept form for the purple line and the green line. And then look at those two equations and tell me what you think is unique about them. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Well, let's get the equation of the purple line first. We're going to need to get the slope and the y-intercept. Well, the slope would be a rise of 2 positive and a run of 4 positive. So my slope is 2 over 4, or 1 half, or 0.5. What's my y-intercept? Well, it's right there. It crosses the uh, y-axis at 2. So my y-intercept is 2. Now, if I've got my slope, 0.5, and I've got my y-intercept, 2, I can write the equation, which would be y equals 0.5x plus 2. How about the green line? green line and the, and the purple line are parallel lines, aren't they? They look like they, they're exactly the same distance apart everywhere you go. I wonder what that's going to mean in terms of their equations. Well, let's take a look. First, let's calculate the slope. And again, I have a rise of positive 2 and a run of positive 4. So my slope is 2 over 4, or 0.5. That's the same slope as, slope as the purple line. How about my y-intercept? 
Well, my y-intercept in this case is minus 3. So b equals minus 3. And the equation for this line is y equals 0.5x minus 3. So you can see these two lines have very similar equations. They have different intercepts, but they have the same slope. If two lines have the same slope, they're parallel lines and they'll never intersect. Well that's our lesson on slope intercept form. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find there worksheets and quizzes to help you learn this concept even better. I hope you had a great time. I hope you learned a lot and I hope I see you again real soon.